Okay. So let's go back, guys. I'm going to do the way that I'll show you, first of all, the method that um, I showed you how to do it. Okay? Cool? All right. So let's take a look at all our square numbers. The square root of 1 equals 1. Square root of not 2. Square root of 4 equals 2. Square root of 9 equals 3. Square root of 16 equals 4. Square root of 25 equals 5. Square root of 36 equals 6. Square root of 49 equals 7. Square root of 64 equals 8. Square root of 81 equals 9. Square root of 100 equals 10. Square root of 121 equals 11. Square root of 144 equals 12. Square root of 169 equals 13. Um, and that's all I have remembered up. Oh, 198 is 14. Square root of 198 equals 14. Okay, so those are the first square roots that I'm, I've memorized, all right? And it's very important for you guys to be able to quit these, not just so you memorize them so you can say, hey, look at me, I can do this. But it's going to be very helpful, actually, when you get to radicals to have these memorized to understand them. So the way that I'm going to teach you how to simplify this, do you guys see square root of 200 up there? Can I write that as an integer? No, right? Um, and 15 is 225. So 200 is going to be somewhere in there, right? So the actual answer to this, square root of 200 is like 14 point something, right? I don't know what it is, but it's a decimal. And it's actually an irrational number. It goes on and on forever. So that's why we don't write square root of 20 in our calculator and give Mr. McLogan the answer in decimals, okay? Because that decimal actually goes on and on and on forever. Forever, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this. And we'll, the only way we can simplify it is let's take out, let's see which one of these we do know and see if we can rewrite 200 in terms of that. So let's take a look at what is the largest number of these square numbers that evenly divide into 200. So let's just start. No, nope, definitely. No, no, no. So does 144 divide into 200? How many times? Well, it goes in there one time, but it doesn't evenly divide into there, right? 121 doesn't evenly divide. Does 100 evenly divide? Yes. So I can rewrite this as 5 times 100 times 2. Do you have to follow me? Right? And let me go and prove one more thing to you. The square root of 36 equals the square root of 9 times 4, right? Either way I represent it, I still get my answer 6, right? Does everybody see how I did that? It doesn't matter which way I write it. Square root of 9 times 4, what I'm saying is I can break this up. As long as there's multiplication going on, I can break up the square root of 9 times the square root of 4. Why is that important? Because I can break up the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. Do I know what the square root of 100 is? 10. Do I know what the square root of 2 is? No. It's somewhere in between 1 and 2, right? So we're just going to leave it there. 5 times 10, though, is 50 radical 2. Ten. Okay. So I just multiply that 5 times by 10. So the best important thing is figure out the largest square number that you can rewrite your radical with those square numbers. Then take the square root of the number you know, leave whatever remainder you have, and then if there's a number outside, you've got to multiply it. Okay? Confusing?